I've been spending way too much time in my art studio and I need some inspiration. I find the best way to get some inspiration is to go out into nature and paint from life on plain air. So that's what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm going to go on a road trip and see if I can find something to paint. I'm on my way to Toport, which is in the middle of the North Island of New Zealand and it sits on a great lake, Lake Topor, which has been described as the inland sea of New Zealand. I took my family with me, my partner Sinead and my two children, Hazel and Theodore, and we set off on the six hours plus car journey from where we live. So I've arrived in Topor, it's a pretty long drive. I'm gonna head to my accommodation, get to bed and find something to paint on plain air tomorrow, can't wait. Topor is a beautiful little town and there's loads to do there. But the main purpose of my trip was to go and paint some mountains so I had to get in my car and drive south for another hour and a half to Tongariro National Park where I could paint some mountain landscapes. After driving for over an hour I found a great little spot to paint that had a beautiful view of Mount Tongariro. Now all these mountains around here are actually volcanic and you could see some of the geothermal activity on the side of the mountain. I found a good spot to paint at the edge of a smaller lake called Lake Rotoera and I started setting up all of my plein air painting gear so that I could paint the mountain in the distance. It was a beautiful sunny spring morning, hardly a breath of wind and really good conditions for outdoor painting. So I'm in the central North Island of New Zealand near Lake Topol and I really want to paint some mountains so I'm painting these mountains in the background. I think it's Mount Tongariro but I'm not sure. But anyway, beautiful day, the light's awesome, I'm going to get to work. So here we go, I'll just explain my setup here. I'm painting on a 8 inch by 8 inch linen canvas panel. Got my paints all set up using titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue and phthalo green. And I'm painting that view in the distance. So I'm using oil paints here and the first thing I do is I start sketching out the composition using a mix of burnt sienna mixed with liquid original. Now liquid's a medium that thins out the paint and speeds up the drying time so it's really good for painting outdoors because quite often the paint will have started to dry just a little bit enough that it's forming a tack and you can layer on some thicker layers later on as you work through your painting. Now the first thing I do when I paint outdoors is I establish where all the dark values and shadows are first. So value refers to how light or dark a subject is. And the reason I want to paint my dark values first is it sets the whole tonal dynamic for the scene. So it makes those mountains look like they're in the distance. Also makes it much easier to paint the areas in light afterwards. But the other main reason is you never know when you're painting outdoors if the weather's going to change. The light definitely changes regardless, but it could be sunny one minute and then the next thing it clouds over. So if you've already established where those shadows are in the landscape, it makes it much, much easier to paint the areas in light, even if the sun's disappeared behind the clouds. Now one thing I did with my painting here, which I don't normally do, is I had it facing the sunlight purely for the purposes of the video footage, but it actually really didn't work too well. I actually prefer to paint in shadow and the subsequent plein air paintings I did on this trip, I did paint them in shadow. Now the reason being is because actually when you paint in the full light that your darks can actually end up coming out darker when you get it under studio light. So I find that when you paint with your canvas in shadow, it means your darks are not gonna be as dark and it means that when you get it under studio light, it looks much better. Now when I paint landscapes in general, and especially when I paint outdoors, I prefer to use a more limited palette because it means I'm more likely to get colour harmony in the painting. So really a lot of these colour combinations are using similar colours. So for the shadows for example, I've used a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna, titanium white and a little alizarin crimson. And I've been able to use those colours for the 
snow shadows, the cloud shadows, and even the tree shadows in the foreground. What I then do is use less titanium white to make the value of the colour darker. To paint those earthy mountain tones in the background, I used a mix of yellow ochre with titanium white, some burnt sienna, a little ultramarine blue, and a little alizarin crimson, and I varied the combinations of these colours. Now for the greens in the foreground, I used a mix of yellow ochre with cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue and titanium white and these formed the base of my greens and then I'd add colours such as alizarin crimson or cadmium red in order to reduce the saturation, also titanium white to make the value of the colour lighter and then even some phthalo green as well if I needed to increase the saturation, also it shifts the hue of the colour. So I'm using these colours in varying combinations to get different hues and tones. For the mountain in the background it's important that I use low chroma colours so that it recedes into the distance. Also the vegetation growing on the mountain is of a low chroma or saturation anyway. Now once I'd covered the canvas here in paint I then went across the whole painting and restated the dark values. So emphasizing the mountain shadows a bit more, perhaps making them a little darker. Also just adding a bit of detail, so painting the suggestion of some exposed rock faces on the side of the mountain for example. Regardless with plain air painting, you probably don't really want to be overly detailed anyway because the style of painting naturally lends itself to more impressionistic and painterly brushwork. So the looseness and painterliness of the brushwork is one of the attractions of painting outdoors because the painting just looks alive and is full of vitality and life to it. Now what I love about painting outdoors is it really captures the essence and atmosphere of the location that you've been in. And for me, well this is my opinion, but I think plein air paintings are much better than photographs because you really capture the essence of the place that you've been in. And also I think you're likely to remember it a bit more as well if you can see it in a painting. Plein air painting really makes you look at the landscape as well and really keeps you in the present moment so you can forget all your worries and all the other silly things that are annoying you in your life. You're just there outdoors in nature, enjoying the view and enjoying the process of painting. Now at this point in the painting here, the liquid that I've mixed in with the paint had started to dry just a little bit, enough so that I can layer on some lighter value color such as the highlights on the mountain and especially the snow. Now I'd made the snow tonally a little bit darker by mixing in some shadow mix, but then right at the end of the painting here, I added some highlights which was titanium white with just a dash of yellow ochre. So just a few bright highlights here really makes that snow pop. I had such an awesome day painting in this location. The weather was perfect and I was really excited to find some landscapes that I could paint the following day. Have a look at that view. Good morning from Taupo, New Zealand. So this is the Waikato River behind me and I'm going to paint this on plein air. Now as you can see at the moment it's a little bit misty but I think it's going to clear soon so hopefully we're going to get some awesome lighting effects. So I'm going to get my gear set up and get into it. So this was an awesome view to paint, a naturally good composition, also a great place to set up my plein air painting gear as well. Now just like with the first painting, I'm sketching out my composition with Burnt Sienna mixed with Liquin Original and I'm painting on a 6 inch by 8 inch linen canvas panel. Now my linen panel is mounted on an Alla Prima Pochard box which is specially designed for painting outdoors. It's made by a guy called Ben Haggett and he hand makes all of them. And I'm using the Belly River Light model. It's really ideal for travelling because it doesn't take up too much space in my bag. 
If you want to get an Alaprima Peshaw box made by Ben Hager, I've put a link in the description box below. Now I've started off by painting the dark values first, so this is the clouds, although that's pretty light in value, but I put that in with the shadows. And I'm using again the same colours that I was using with the first plain air painting, mainly combinations of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and titanium white and also a little alizarin crimson. So if I want the value to be darker, say for these trees in the foreground, then I'll barely use any titanium white if any and it's mainly ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and you can create a near black with these colours. That's because burnt sienna is actually a dark orange and orange is opposite to blue on the colour wheel. Now even though it was still a little foggy when I was painting I could see some of the clouds were breaking up. So I painted some cloud highlights using titanium white with some burnt sienna mixed in and then for the sky I used ultramarine blue with a little phthalo green and titanium white. Even though it was overcast when I was painting and there was a lot of diffuse light I kind of figured out where the shadows were likely to be because I knew the sun was probably likely to come out so that's how I was able to establish those main shadows. Now when it came to painting the vegetation I used varying mix of yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue and titanium white to form my base green. And for the greens in the distance I lowered the chroma or saturation by mixing in more titanium white but also a colour opposite i.e. a colour that contains red opposite to green so for example a burnt sienna or an alizarin crimson both these colours contain red and I also use cadmium red as well but generally I reserve that more for foreground greens because it's a higher chroma colour. I've also here and there mixed in a little phthalo green for some of those emerald tones. Now the important thing in this scene is the difference between some of these greens. So the trees, for example, are some of the darkest values in the landscape and in landscapes in general. That's because there's a lot of occlusion shadows, especially when you have stands of trees. So these are some of the darkest values in the landscape. So that's important in a painting such as this so that they stand out more. The grass, on the other hand, is much, much lighter in value. One of the more lighter values in the landscape and a similar value to sky and then there's some other light valued color vegetation growing on the side of the gorge here now for the reflections in the water it's mainly reflecting the vegetation so i've used some of that green mix but lowered the chroma of the color mixing in more yellow ochre ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and then for these more turquoise tones in the foreground I've used yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, titanium white and just a little bit of phthalo green. I've even used that in some of the shadows of the reflections of the trees. And to make it look more like water as well, I'm using more vertical downwards brush marks using a number 5 bristle flat brush. Now what I like about painting on smaller canvases when I'm painting outdoors is that I can paint them more quickly but they make great little studies that you can refer to for studio painting so I think I might do a studio painting of this scene and as I said earlier they just make great paintings to really capture the atmosphere and the essence of the place that you've been in and to help serve as a memory and just to remember the places that you've been to so for me, my plain air paintings are like a diary of my life of the places that I've been to. It's another reason I love it so much. Now, if you're new to plain air painting or you've never tried it and want to give it a go but not sure where to start, then I've put a link to a blog post that I've written on the beginner's guide to plain air painting. So that link is in the description box below. At this point in the painting, I'd established the main colours and values and then I went back across the whole painting to restate some of these dark values and refine some of the forms and elements within the scene. So here painting some more of these tree shadows and this time I mixed ultramarine blue with a little yellow ochre. So it'll also mix in with some of that colour underneath but it's also making the value a bit darker and adding more of a green element to these tree shadows. 
Then there was painting things such as these rocks that are in the river here and then also the shore of the river bank and for this I've used a mix of yellow ochre with burnt sienna, titanium white and a little ultramarine blue. Now the next thing to paint was some of these ripples and reflections in the water. The river itself was pretty reflective and I just used my sky and cloud mix here to paint those ripples. The brush I'm using is a synthetic number three filbert brush and what I like about this brush is the bristles meet to a nice fine point and you've got the rounded edge of the bristles as well so it's really good for painting things such as ripples and reflections in water. Now the next thing I was doing was I was adding some more colour to the river in the foreground using the same mix as before but just making the colour a little bit more saturated also just defining some of these reflections of the trees a bit more as well as well as the reflections on the other side of the river so i hope you're enjoying this video so far and it's inspiring you to perhaps want to go out plein air painting or even just paint some landscapes in your studio and if you would like to learn more about painting landscapes and take a much deeper dive then you should check out my online art school my online art school has loads of full length painting tutorial videos so really taking a deep dive into landscape paintings, seascapes, painting mountains, plein air painting, still lifes, all sorts of things and I'm always adding new content to it as well. There's also a really great community section in there as well so you can chat to other members in the group and you can share your artwork and ask questions and we're getting some pretty good discussions going in the community section. So I hope you'll consider joining the Samuel Earp Online Art School. I've put a link in the description box below and I hope to see you there. Also, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Now then, back to the painting, and what I'm doing here is I'm starting to add a few highlights to the vegetation, so the tree in the foreground, also the trees and the vegetation that's in the midground. So I'm still using the same colour combinations with the greens, I've just varied the colours in different amounts to get those different hues. And in some cases I'm also using some smaller brushes so the number three synthetic filbert brush has been very useful for painting some of the foliage. Now again there's not much detail in these plein air paintings because we really just want to capture the atmosphere and the tonality of the painting, also the colours and values. This is what we really want to bring alive. And as I said, I'm going to be probably doing a studio painting of this so I can use this painting as a reference as well as my reference photos that I've taken and there I can add a lot more detail. Now I finished up this plein air painting by adding the suggestion of a few stems and branches and for this I'm using a number zero synthetic rigger brush which is perfect as it's got lots of flex in the bristles and then painting things like sky holes through the trees. I really enjoyed painting this artwork and I hope it inspires you to try plein air painting. Stay tuned for part two of my plein air painting adventures around Topor.